Welcome to the Brain and Mind Institute at Aga Khan University. Thank you for addressing mental health with the dedication and compassion it deserves. Thank you for placing it firmly on the global health agenda. As per WHO, 25% of the East African population is experiencing mental health issues. Of that, depression and anxiety are the most common mental health conditions affecting 10% of the population. People in the low and middle income countries continue to suffer a heavy burden of mental ill health and neurological problems and we are not doing enough to address this. This conference therefore has been put together to bring those of us from low and middle income countries together to think about what needs to be done to change this narrative. Our theme, bridging the gap in low and middle income countries, underscores the urgency of addressing these disparities in access to mental health resources and the need for culturally sensitive, sustainable solutions. I think those days are gone when we try to prove something. I think we're beyond that phase when it comes to mental health and mental well-being. We really need to improve, whether it's education related to mental health, removing the stigma, the research, the care delivery, how to make it, make it accessible for so many people who are dependent on us in Global South. No single entity, no single profession, no single institution is going to be able to address these challenges all by themselves. That this is a convergence of effects that's going to require broad-based, intense collaboration and to be open to ideas and innovations from across the spectrum. As my predecessor Paul Farmer once beautifully said, with rare exceptions, all your most important achievements on this planet will come from working with others. In one word, a partnership. And that is what you have here in this room. We can together partner to design programs to address many of the uh, problems that uh, we are facing today. Any policy work that we're moving forward must include a strong component of research for us to inform. 13% of our breast cancer women had severe depression. A quarter of our women had severe anxiety. I, the oncologist, am focused on treating you and curing you. I have little time to worry about anxiety and depression. But this data in our own patient population says we, the oncologists, have to focus on this mental health issue. We need easy access to mental health support. We need to have conversations about mental health. We need to make it normal. How to convince our policymakers to invest in a challenges of mental health because the burden of mental health is extremely high. It is necessary for governments to increase resource allocation for mental health. We need to see tangible changes in the funding model for mental health research. We need to make sure that we start supporting research. We come up with strategies for domestic financing that can drive priority research question, which we can now be able to pick up and use to inform policy formulation at implementation level. In a land such as we live in, in a land in which a great deal of is lost under the weight of climate change. There must be a body, and that body is you and I, must be to give hope. This conference has given me more hope. I've networked and I've just realized that all, all the things I've always thought about working with the grassroots. The community has been given a role, especially primary health care providers and other stakeholders to intersect and to help in mitigating mental health issues in this country. What I found was fascinating was the push for research to start coming from the global south, from Africa and other so-called developing nations, because perhaps not all the answers are to be found in America and the global north. We need to collaborate 
both from ba the basic um, scientists, the clinicians, the psychologists, the nurses and everything to have an inclusive, you know, and holistic method in solving mental health issues.